Are we on? I'm on now. There we go. I don't think I am. She is a number number four, brother. Number four. Yeah, two more. You want? Gonna say it like that. Bingo. Okay. Bingo. 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 All right. <laughs> Let me turn my phone off. We're gonna open up prayer. Sorry. Oh. Father God, we love you, Lord. Thank you for this beautiful sunny day. Lord, we thank you for uh, the we the wind blowing around and not too windy. It's just right. Father God, and we thank you, Lord, that we get to honor our fallen soldiers today, Lord, and all our loved ones that have passed. Father God, we lift them up to you. Lord, we lift up our government, our president, Lord, and we ask you, Lord, to put it in their hearts to repent and to give their lives to you and surrender, Father God, and follow you. Lord, we love you. We ask you for them to make the right decisions to stop this craziness, Lord. Amen. Father God, we lift up the passion play to you, Lord. We ask you to put it on people's hearts from all over the world to come here and just fill this town full of Christians, Lord. Yes. Let's take back our town. We love our town, Lord. Father God, we lift up all the churches, Lord. And Father God, above all, we lift you up, Lord. We love you. We praise your name. Lord, we ask you to take us completely out, that we give you all the praise and all the glory in everything that is done, Lord. It is all about you, not about us. Father God, we love you so much. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. 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 <laughs> Man, we had a busy week this week. Let's just hear it. Hey, what's that? I think I'm out of batteries or something. Here he goes. Green lights on. Red light. Green light. Hello. Can you hear me? I got a talk. I got a talk. <laughs> Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me okay. So, um, I wasn't here last week. You all know that. So, I guess you guys went to the river without me. Yeah! yeah. yeah. So, we have uh, a lot of... Um, certificates and photos to hand out yeah. to those that got baptized last week and we are going to the river today too so please come and join us it's amazing a celebration see who's here. right here let's start right here what river's that uh king's river king's right river. down the road we like to go in the river and we're so going today awesome, too so. right after we get finished eating yeah, we gotta eat a little bit. <clears throat> so if you would like to rededicate yourself to that's the Lord right. also, also, please join right. us. And uh, that, so. first of all, the one that wanted us all to go to the river started off with Orion. Come on yeah. up here, brother. Uh -huh. And we do that because we take pictures. We do the pictures as they come out of the water because the light is just amazing. It's it's beautiful. So Thomas Moan, I don't think he's here. Oh, hey, hey! Look at that guy. Yeah. 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 Oh, uh, Jason Farrell. I did not see him. All right. Uh, Stephanie Ann. Oh, she's at work. She's at work. That's a good place for her. <laughs> Stephen Howerton. And Leslie, you didn't Leslie see her come in either. either. Okay, so okay. if you were baptized in the past, like a couple of weeks, I have your um, photos and everything in the office. So I see a couple of people that were here that we yes. got a couple of weeks ago. So. Hey, before we get any farther, yes. um, there's a list right here. Right. If you want to be baptized today, we're going to the river. Write your name down. Print. Yeah, print it. And uh, so if you don't get your name on the list, correctly. it's all right, man. We'll deal we'll with that. We'll dunk you. Get your list later. But um, <laughs> if 
you just pray about it today. Right. The Lord puts it on your heart. We're going. Let's do it. Amen. 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 Oh, and also, um, Erica wanted me to mention that Papa Mike, before he passed, he got to be baptized. Amen. So that All is right. awesome. Okay, so on another note, <laughs> we've had a really busy, 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 busy week. So the food pantry is like, it's going crazy. And yeah. we are so thankful for our volunteers that keep this place running smoothly. And um, I know Chuck and I were gone, or he was gone a couple of days this week. And so you guys just, you know, you pick it up and you just keep going. I, I appreciate all the work and the help. And, you know, we don't even have to be here. And it's still going good. So I love that. We can't do it I love being able to all. depend on people that are, you know, so awesome. So this week, we were able to help 311 people, wow. 105 families through the food pantry. And we have noticed a humongous increase in the buffet meals. Yes, we have. 451. Oh. So being the end of the month, these are the numbers for the end of the, for the month of May. Uh, 1,164 people, wow. 406 families, 1,607 hot meals. Wow. Now you know why you're eating. And um, so you guys help unload 8,203 pounds of food off of the wow. So we just we just gotta say thank you. You guys are amazing. And that doesn't so. even include all the stuff that we get from donated Vic through and other and all the other yeah, people exactly. that donate stuff. And man. we appreciate all that. God too. is just all awesome. Those, yes. Hallelujah. Blows my mind. If you want to see a miracle, hang around a couple of right. man. Right. You will see it daily. It is crazy. What else you got? What? Man, you were fast. Okay, well, uh... Oh, we have a birthday. Oh, we do have a birthday. We do. We do? Oh, Shauna. Oh, Shauna. Oh, thank you. Love you. Hey, with Shauna and everybody else, let's sing happy birthday to him. And I'm going to cover this up. One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Shauna. Happy birthday to you. All right, we're going to play some praise and worship music. We love you. Get it together. We need you up here. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. I love you. you let's go, let's go, girl. We need you. Yeah. I'll let you walk her up there. I'm going to chat with you. All right. You guys, um, feel that praise Don't lose your voice. Just do it respectful. We are here in the house of the Lord. The altars are open. If you um, need prayer, please come up here. And I promise you, somebody will be praying for you. They will come up here and pray for you. And, you know, we don't go to the altar because we've done horrible things all the time. Sometimes we go to the altar just to thank Him for so much that He has done in our lives. So, um, just you guys praise God. And I love you all. And of course, we are winging it, so yes. no practice, so we're winging it. <laughs> And I, for a second there, I, I, I glanced into the audience and I'm like, we have a lot of people. Holy God. God, we love the Lord. Amen. <laughs> I, I, um, I found it in my heart uh, earlier this week that uh, I just want to talk about it here real quick. Here. And um, all the school shootings we had in Texas, and I just want to make sure we pray for them here. But also, uh, I, I, what I was, we had some 
personal things that happened in the business too as well that led us to think here that you know it should be talked about because uh, bullying and all that stuff here I don't want and I hope I want to remind you guys here that not through my own words but through God's words here the Sermon on the Mount here one that reflects that especially here was the one that talks about in love, love your enemies uh, That's right. And pray for those who persecute for you here. Because yeah. if we love each other here, I mean, I could love Don forever because he's a great bass player, and that's too easy. There's no reward in that. The reward isn't to loving him because that's what the challenge I love you to. <laughs> Even he's not going to be with us next week here, but we still love you. Man. But uh, we have to we pray that uh, pray for the families and the children here. You know, that's it's uh, it's harsh. So that's why I wanted to do this song again this week here. Uh, because like it, it, we are all equal, no matter how ugly I am, and no matter how, how <laughs> handsome Don is or whatever. You know, God looks at us all equally and all the same. You know, and uh, we have to learn to love each other like that here. <laughs>
see what the light. Like. The there was light. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> And we're going to take a little time to honor our vets. Everybody will settle down. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Praise your name. God bless America. Father God, we lift up our fallen ones to you, Lord. We love you so much. Praise your name.
Traces, boys. And, uh, I'm, very, I'm very thankful that my sons are men of God. Yeah. Are they in the service? He is in the army. I have one in the Navy. His wife's Navy. Thank you. Nice. Yeah. Yes, I would love for uh, all the vets right now if you could just stand up because we love you guys. Yes. you but man that was awesome that is awesome all right um today we are in yeah i told him right galatians 5 i love you brother we thank you father god for your word we believe everything in this to be written by you and to be true father god let it be easy for us to read and easy for us to understand father god and we love you in the name of jesus christ our lord and savior Amen. Amen. All right. Man. All right. I didn't get it together up here. So. All right. Well, uh, Galatians 5. This is a pretty rough one, too, like last week. But, uh, you know, I just believe that, uh, you know, if, if you're not walking out of church feeling like, you need that you don't need to repent or anything like that. I don't think you're getting the message. So I love y'all and you know I don't beat you over the head all week long with the Bible as I just show you love. But on Sunday, it's serious time. <laughs> I love you. There we go. And the way I do it here, I read the whole chapter and then we're gonna go through it afterwards. Thank you, Lord. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Mark my words. I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be crucified that he is obligated to obey the whole law. You who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. For through the Spirit we eagerly await by the faith, by faith the righteousness for which we hope. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. Amen. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. You were running a good race who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth. That kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. Brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. As for those <coughs> agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite and devour each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. So I say, walk by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh 
they are in conflict with each other, so that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, self-ambition, <coughs> dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Stop it right there. Thank you, Father God, for your word, Lord. Let us use this word and get closer to you, Lord. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Well, like I said, I got to use my little chicken scratch notes because uh, I do not recall things very good. I messed up my brain too much. If you are an alcoholic and a drug addict and anything like that, you better quit as fast as you can because let me tell you, you lose all them things, man. The recall is gone. Sometimes that's a good thing. But God loves us. No, all the bad stuff you remember. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> all right, here goes. Verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Christ died to set us free from sin and from a long list of laws and regulations. Christ came to set us free, not free to do whatever we want because that would lead us back into slavery to our selfish desires. Rather, thanks to Christ, we are now free and able to do what was impossible before, Amen. to live unselfishly. Those who appeal to their freedom so that they can have their own way or indulge their own desires are falling back into sin. But it is also wrong to put a burden of law keeping on Christians. We must stand against those who would enslave us with rules, methods, or special conditions for being saved or growing in Christ. That's serious right there. Verse 2, Mark my words, I, Paul, tell you that if you let yourselves be circumcised, Christ will be of no value to you at all. Well, trying to be saved by keeping the law and being saved by grace are two entirely different approaches. Christ will be of no value to you at all means that Christ's provisions for our salvation will not help us if we are trying to save ourselves. The sacrifice of Jesus was perfect and complete, but it cannot be of value to a person who trusts in something else. Christ will provide unlimited help to those who place their <coughs> undivided trust in Him, but no help at all to those who bypass His saving work. Snap. Verse 3 and 4. Again, I declare to every man who lets himself be circumcised that he is obligated to obey the whole law. Verse 4, you who are trying to be justified by the law have been alienated from Christ. You have fallen away from grace. Circumcision was a symbol of having the right background and doing everything required by religion. No amount of work discipline, or moral behavior can save us. If a person were counting on finding favor with God by being circumcised, he would also have to obey the rest of God's laws completely. <clears throat> Trying to save ourselves by keeping all God's laws only separate us 
from God. And God's laws, what we talked about last week, are all them. How many? 300, 300 and something, yeah. <laughs> Verse 5. For through the Spirit we eagerly await by faith the righteousness for which we hope. And that does not, do not take away, always do and go by the Ten Commandments. Right. Don't cancel that out. The Holy Spirit works only within the area of the sacrifice of Christ. He demands that we place our faith only in the cross of Christ. Hope for long-term righteousness before God is through living by faith in the power of the Holy Spirit. Verse 6, For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. The only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. We are saved by faith, not by deeds. But love for others and for God is the response of those whom God has forgiven. God's forgiveness is complete, and Jesus said that those who are forgiven much love much, Luke 7, 47, because faith expresses itself through love, you can check your love for others as a way to monitor your faith. Remember that. You are growing, your faith is growing when you are loving others. You stop loving others, guess what? Your faith is in trouble. Verse 7, you were running a good race who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth. <coughs> Paul talks about running a good race quite a few times. He compares a Christian's walk like running a race. For me... It's a little like running a gauntlet, man. I'm like, things are getting thrown at me and distractions from every direction, man, and trying to throw me off. But it, it, you know, I, I got to really read my Bible and love and pray to beat all that, I'm telling you. Because uh, I'm just like the rest of you. I get my feelings hurt. I, you know, I get upset, I get angry, you know, and I pray for forgiveness right then, man. I get on with it, man. I don't sit there and carry it around. And I pray you do the same. Do not let that hang on you. But here he is talking about the Galatians. They started off in the ministry doing good. And then false teachers who were attempting to pull them away from the cross to other things. Kind of sounds like nowadays all these false teachers and religions. Mm -hmm. They have all these bag, the bag of tricks, man. They play on us trying to distract <coughs> us away from the cross. Yep. If there is any religion that is trying to take you away from Jesus Christ on that cross and the cross and what it stands for, that right. he died for our sins, you are forgiven. If they are preaching anything beside that, you get away from them. Don't, don't mess with them. Verse 8, that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. Well, the Holy Spirit calls us to draw close to the Lord. False teachers, even the devil himself, tries to use the Bible to support his or her belief or opinion. They will take a verse or a part of a verse and build a whole religion out of it. And there are so many. Be careful on who and what ministries you watch. There are a lot of them that will steer you the wrong way and cause you confusion. And remember, confusion comes from the devil. Yes. Read your word yourself. Don't, don't take my word for it. Mm -hmm. You read. Read your word. And get close. And if you have never read the Bible, and you want to read the Bible, man, start in John. I, yeah. I think that's the best place to start if you want to know who or Jesus James. Christ is. Yeah, James. Well, they're all good. Oh, you yeah. know? But, um, okay. Verse 9. A little yeast works through the whole batch of dough. Well, a little yeast is corruption. The whole batch of dough is the church. And the introduction of a small amount of false doctrine 
will ultimately consume the entirety of the belief system. Just a little bit. And, you know, I'm going to just dive into that real quick off my notes. If they are taught, telling you you're going to get rich following mm -hmm. Jesus, you need to, if you want a healing, if you're not paying your tithing, you're not going to get your healing, or any of that crap like that, man, you get away from them, because that is all false teachers. Yep. Verse 10, I am confident in the Lord that you will take no other view. The one who is throwing you into the confusion, whoever that may be, <clears throat> will have to pay the penalty. Well, judgment will ultimately come on these who attempt to present a way of salvation other than Christ and the cross. We're all going to stand in front of the Lord someday. Amen. And we're going to have to answer, answer for what we've done. So, um, don't take your walk lightly. Be, uh, just stand for Christ. Read your word. Then you know. Verse 11, brothers and sisters, if I am still preaching circumcision, why am I still being persecuted? In that case, the offense of the cross has been abolished. Well, persecution proved that Paul was preaching the true gospel. If he had taught what the false teachers were teaching, no one would have been offended. <laughs> but he was teaching the truth. You know, I got a question for you. Have friends or loved ones rejected you because you have taken the stand for Christ? Yes. You don't have to show your hands. I know they have. Yep. Because uh, I lost every single friend that I had when I gave my life to Christ. Yep. I mean, every one of them. And uh, that just showed me, you know, that I was really running with the wrong crowd and screwing up. And mm -hmm. that they all just turned their back on me. So get used to it. <laughs> Jesus said <clears throat> not to be surprised if the world hates you because it hated him. John 15, 18, 19. Mm -hmm. Just as Paul can continue to faithfully proclaim the message about Christ, you should continue doing the ministry God has given you in spite of the obstacles others may put in your way. Lord puts it on your heart to do a ministry do it. You tell them all, just shush up, talk to the hand. Because if you crochet, you make cookies, you bake cakes, you do whatever. You're doing it for the Lord. You keep on doing it. Do not let anybody discourage you from that. Verse 12, as for those <clears throat> agitators, I wish they would go the whole way and emasculate themselves. Well, Paul sarcastically suggests that the troublemakers who promote circumcision go the rest of the way and castrate themselves. Oh, snap! That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> Verse 13. You, my brothers and sisters, were called to be free, but do not use your freedom to indulge the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. Paul distinguishes between freedom to sin and freedom to serve. Freedom, our license to sin, is no freedom at all because it enslaves you to Satan, others, or your own sinful nature. Christians, by contrast, should not be slaves to sin because they are free to do right and to glorify God through loving service to others. How will you use your freedom? How will you live for your live your new life? Today, last week, when we went and baptized people, somebody down there gave their life to Christ that day. And um, I pray that the Lord will use them and they will run into the right person to be able to guide them into what is good. And you know, like we talked about last week, some plant seed, some water, some do the harvest. We all play our part in that. 
We're all part of that. So just because you've seen somebody get saved, you just keep praying for them and keep praying that somebody is going to be put into their path to keep showing them what is right, you know, and how to be a Christian. Verse 14 and 15, For the entire law is fulfilled in keeping this one command, Love your neighbor as yourself. If you bite another and devour each other, watch out, you will be destroyed by each other. When we believers <clears throat> lose the motivation of love, we become critical of others. We stop looking for good in them and see only their faults. Soon we lose our being united as a whole. Have we focused on others? shortcomings instead of their strengths. We need to remind ourselves of Jesus' command to love others as you love yourself in Matthew twenty-two thirty-nine, 39. When you begin to feel critical of someone, make a list of that person's positive qualities. When problems need <coughs> to be addressed, confront it in love rather than gossip. And if you hear gossip of somebody, or if somebody around you is gossiping, get away from them. Amen. And if you hear something, you go directly to the source and you ask them if that's what you think you've got to do. So, before, yeah, before you believe it, ask the person themselves. Amen. Uh, it's not Amen. hard. That's right. Even 100. That's right. Verse 16. <laughs> So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. We have to place our faith in Christ in the cross, through which the Spirit works completely. This proves that extents of the sin, the, the existence of the sin nature in the believer, it declares that consciousness of corrupt desires as stated, the only way to not fulfill the lust of the flesh is for our faith to be placed only in the cross. <coughs> Did you get that? Mm -hmm. yep. I know it's kind of a tongue tied deal. But um, you believe in the cross, man, and you lean on the Lord because you're going to want to um, do them desires. Because I know, I'll just tell you flat out, when I backslid, I know deep down in me, I wanted to do that, or I would have never done it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Remember yeah. that. Yeah. You start feeling yourself, oh, yep. maybe just one drink won't hurt me. <laughs> maybe just one this and that won't hurt me. Yes. You better get on your knees and pray, because let me tell you, when you fall, Man, you fall like never you fell in before because all his little minions, they bring their buddies and they all jump on you and you are back in riding in hell. And let me tell you, by experience, don't do it. It's not worth it. And time is short. Verse 17, For the flesh desires what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want. Paul describes the two forces conflicting with us, within us, the Holy Spirit and the sinful nature. Paul is not saying that these forces are equal by no means. The Holy Spirit is indefinitely stronger. But if we rely on our own wisdom, we will make wrong choices. If we try to follow the Spirit by our own human effort, we will fail. Our only way to freedom from our evil desires is through the empowering of the Holy Spirit. The old nature must be cast out, which the Holy Spirit alone can do. Without the Holy Spirit and Jesus together, the believer cannot live a holy life. You have to have the Lord to live a holy life. And, you know, we're all going to make sense make mistakes and sin because we are sinners we live in a sinful world and that's just the way it is man you ask for forgiveness and get up and get going man verse 18 but if you are led by the spirit you are not under the law 
To be led by the Spirit implies that you are allowing ourselves to be led in the first place. As we invite the Holy Spirit to direct us, He enables us to defeat the power of the flesh more and more so we can walk in the way of freedom and righteousness. Hallelujah! Verse 19 and 20 through 21. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Yikes. <laughs> Don't show your hands. Anybody guilty of that? Kind of <laughs> Man. We all have evil desires and we can't ignore them. In order for us to follow the Holy Spirit's guidance, we must deal with them. These desires include obvious sins such as sexual immorality that we read about last week in 1 Timothy 1. And the real obvious witchcraft. They also include less obvious sins such as selfish ambition, hatred, and jealousy. Those who ignore such sins or refuse to deal with them reveal that they have not received the gift of the Spirit that leads to a transformed life. Some of these sins are gross sins, but many often viewed as acceptable behavior. Paul's point is that this type of evidence that a person is not saved. Ouch. Paul does not say that anyone who has ever done any of these things will be excluded from heaven. Rather, those who have a habit of sin are excluded from the kingdom of God because they were never really included. They were never truly saved. This tells us in no uncertain terms, that if our faith is not everlastingly in Christ and the cross, we simply won't make it. God doesn't have two ways of salvation and victory. Only one, and that is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Amen. I know that is painful to hear, but if you are still screwing around with this stuff, there is a real good possibility that you're not saved. And as Jesus says, the gate is narrow. And, you know, I want you to know, hell, and they say, and heaven is forever and ever and ever and ever when you go and you die. Just think of this. Say you got the Sahara Desert, say, sand everywhere and you pick up one little grain of sand you're standing in all that sand that one little grain of sand is 10,000 years just say 10,000 years go by you got to pick up another one that's forever and ever and ever I'm telling you hell is never ending and I, I don't know, but I don't want any of us to go to hell or anyone that I know or see. I want everybody to go to heaven. But Jesus Christ himself said that all these people from the beginning of time of, of man, there's going to be very few in heaven. There's going to be a lot of people in hell. And that should strike all of us straight to the core. That we should know that, hey, you know, I ain't got much time in life. Yeah, I may be this age, and maybe I could live to be this age. No, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. Amen. And you better just get on it right now. <coughs> get on your loved ones. Get on everybody that you know. You get on them and tell them that Jesus loves them and that Jesus died for their sins. So, I just wanted to throw that in there of hell is real. Heaven is real. I love you, Lord.
22 and 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, <laughs> peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness. 23. Gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Well, the, fr the fruit of the Spirit is the spontaneous work of the Holy Spirit in us. When you are listening to the Word, the Holy Spirit is in you when it's telling you, hey, I need this Jesus. I need to change my life. The Holy Spirit is in you all the time. When you give Christ your life, guess what? He's right there all the time saying, hey man, you're screwing up. Get away from that. What people call it, you're so conscious. Amen. The Spirit produces these character traits that are found in the nature of Christ. They are the byproducts of Christ's control. We can't obtain them by trying to get them without His help. If we want the fruit of the Spirit to grow in us, we must join our lives to His. We must know Him. We must love Him remember Him, and imitate Him. As a result, we will fulfill the intention, intended purpose of the love of the law to love God and our neighbors. Man, thank you, Jesus. Verse 24. Those who belong to Christ, Jesus had crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. In order to accept Christ as a Savior, we need to turn from our sins and willing, willingly nail our sinful nature to the cross. And I, I'm just going to veer from this for a minute. I've seen this movie one time in this church. They had a big cross like the one we got outside on the stage. And people were bringing their bags of weed and their pornography and all their crap that their sins were and nailing it to that cross. Wow. Man, how awesome that was. Me and Patty were just like, Whoa, we ball our babies when we seen that, you know? It was like, that is awesome. This doesn't mean, however, that we will never see traces of its evil desires again. As Christians, we still have the capacity to sin, but we have been set free from sin's power over us and no longer have to give into it. We must daily commit our sinful tendencies to God's control, daily crucify them, and moment by moment, draw on the Spirit's power to overcome them. I'm closing with this. Verse 25 and 26. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envy each other. Once again, if we are saved, we should live like it. The Holy Spirit is the source <clears throat> of our new life. So keep in step with His leading. Don't let anything or anyone else determine your values and standards in any area of your life. Everyone needs a certain amount of approval from others. But those who go out of their way to secure honors or to win popularity become conceited and show that they are not following the Holy Spirit's lead. Oh, snap. Mm -hmm. Those who look to God for approval won't need to envy others because we are God's sons and daughters. We have His Holy Spirit as a loving guarantee of His approval. Seek to please God and the approval of others won't seem so important. Yeah. Stopping with that. You know, that's a hard thing to do. Because we always, you know, not all of us, some of us, we want to please people. And we want to um, get, yeah, and, and we want to be um, pat on the back and this, that, and the other. Man, kick that to the curb. And, and I see this a lot, and I know, you know, when people are at the deal, they make a big scene out of putting their money into the deal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Don't, 
Don't let this hand know what this hand is doing. You go help a brother. You go give him a cheeseburger. Give him a blanket. You tell him that Jesus loves him. Don't be looking for no pat on the back. You do it because the Lord put it on your heart to do it, and you want to help that person. And, you know, I, I love y'all, and I, I do get a lot of pats on the back, and I, that's not what I'm about, man. I'm not about that at all. I am not doing that for a pat on the back. I see a need, and I want to try to help that person with whatever I can. That's all you guys are supposed to do, all of us. Whatever you got. Like, I tell people this all the time, especially homeless people. If you can't help yourself, right. don't be trying to help Joe. Amen. Because Joe's going to drag you down even farther. Yeah. And I've seen more people out in my parking lot fail miserably because they were trying to help somebody out that was all strung out on drugs. And then all of a sudden, they're on drugs yeah. now, and their life goes to crap in a hurry. Mm -hmm. You take care of yourself first. You get yourself strong in your faith, and let the Holy Spirit do the rest. Don't be going out of your way to help somebody when you're going to just, they're going to screw you up, take advantage of you, all that. It says Stay that in the Bible. Amen. <laughs> Misery loves company. Yeah. So um, normally we go around and we ask people stuff today, but we had a long service today. So, uh, yes, brother. Just real quick, come on out. There's something I wanted to share. All right. I travel all over the country, and I've been to a lot of different churches, and this church has the most spirit of God that I've seen anywhere else. And you guys help more people than anything. But there's one thing that um, I'm glad you shared this message today because God was kind of pressing <coughs> on my heart to share something. Um, uh, John 15:10. Jesus says that uh, if you keep my commandments, you abide in my love. Uh, just as I kept my Father's commandments, and his love abides in me. Well, the devil has tricked us all into not keeping one of those commandments every single week that yeah. we come to this yeah. church on We've Sunday. We've talked about it. You know, we are all, uh, Sunday is the, the, the day of the sun god, Apollo. <coughs> Apollo is also mentioned in Revelations as the beast in the bottomless pit, Apollyon. Oh. So um, I don't know, if it's, it's up to y'all as a congregation, but um, I, I suggest we start meeting on Saturday and observe the Sabbath. <laughs> yeah. 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 The Sabbath holy. And uh, it's not that we're going to go to hell, yeah. we're not doing that, but wouldn't yeah. it please the Lord if we did yeah. meet on his day? Yeah. That's all i got to say. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, we've had this discussion and it's like, man, whew, it's not like everybody is not giving us a hard time. Hey, brother. Can I first meet on a church? This is his first day being in a church. Oh, God bless him. We're going to the river, brother, after we eat. Yeah. Uh, yay! But, um, I love you guys. And um, please, if you want to get baptized today, let's go get baptized. If you want to come witness it, and it's a beautiful day out. It's a beautiful day to go to the river. Come with us. And uh, we go down to the Kings River. It's down there by the bridge on this side of it. And um, you're welcome to come down there. It'll probably be about 1.30, a little after that, before we get down. Uh, probably closer to 1.45, too. <laughs> but uh, I love y'all. And um, I'm going to close in prayer. And if you guys could do me a favor, though, real quick, I'm sorry. Um, before we all get to bustling about and setting up tables, if you guys could do me a favor and take all the brown chairs, if you're sitting in a brown chair, stack them up like either back there by the girls' bathroom or <coughs> over here so we can maneuver everything around. And what we do, we throw up tables and we eat. So uh, please stay and eat if you can, if you want to. You're welcome. All right. Yeah, and anybody wants to serve, I would love to see some men back there. I'm the salad guy, but if some men would be back there to help serve. That would be awesome. I'm a cake guy. Woo! I'm a cake. All right. All right, I'm going to put some prayer. Father God, we thank you, Lord. We ask you to bless the food we're going to eat, bless the fellowship we're going to have. And bless the baptisms that we get to have today, Lord. And we just ask you, Lord, that when we get down there on the river, 
that other people will see and want to give their life to Christ and be baptized, Lord. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you for our salvation. We thank you for everything that you do for us, Lord. We thank you for living in a free country. Yes, we thank you for that, Lord, living in a free country. Father God, we love you and we praise your name. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. 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 Uh-oh, you better be fast. <laughs>